webinar. Just wanna yeah, see if we have any commissioners who are logged in as attendees. Doesn't look like it. It's just us. Oh, there should be two more coming. Yeah. Um, so, Joel, you see Merlene is, yeah, you did. You're on it. And Nancy's over there too. God, you're just like a heartbeat ahead of me. That's great. Excellent. So, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we have a quorum. Yeah, Mark is there. So just looking for Susan Schiavone. Susan and oh. Ama. Susan's on. She's on now. And Tam is over there on uh, attendees. Yeah, so bring her over. And then I think we're just down to Monica. And did I not see her? No. Should I, should I say join as a panelist? You're moved over as a panelist now. Yep. We have you. Great. Yeah, you have to be, you know, trilingual. You have to understand Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet. There's probably a couple more, and everyone's a little bit different participant versus attendee. And, and I speak none of them. <laughs> You've done a good job. So I think we're just, we're just down to Monica. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Right. Yeah, it's both uh, Monica and Myrene Fisher, right? Uh, Merlene's there. There it is. Oh. I'm here. Oh, okay. Yep. And uh, we've got both Jean and Shelly, right? Yep. Okay. So yes. we're in pretty good. Pretty good hands. And, and Robin. <laughs> oh, hey, Robin. So welcome, everybody, um, to what could be our last, um, unless it's not, but um, could be our last <laughs> meeting. I was struck by your scheduling uh, expertise, having chosen to meet on Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, but I'm glad we've got a, a pretty good crew here. I thought that the uh, conversation of our last meeting was very engaging, uh, very uh, well data informed, and very interesting. Um, since then, there's been some communication. Um, Troy, I think I saw an email from you questioning uh, an interesting data point um, about Mark's suggestion at our last meeting. So I think that uh, Chances are that um, the demographers will be in a position to maybe address that during this conversation. But with that, I think, uh, Joelle, let's formally uh, call this meeting to order and do a roll call. Commissioner Lau? Absent. Commissioner Eisenhart? Present. Commissioner Lilly? Here. Commissioner Ishikawa? Here. Commissioner Fisher. I see your hand. I'm here. Uh, Had to mute. Commissioner Over. Here. Commissioner Southridge. Here. Commissioner Malkin. Here. Commissioner Schiavone. Here. All commissioners are present with the exception of Commissioner Lau. Fabulous. Um, I understand there are no additions or corrections to the agenda. 
and there were no um, written public comments received in advance of this meeting. <clears throat> I do see we still have some participants, so we might as well go out for public comment. If there is anybody in the field uh, who has a comment to make on any item within our jurisdiction, uh, please raise your hand. Dave, I do not see anybody with their hands raised. Seeing none. Terrific. That brings us to our first action item, which is consider adoption of the last commission meeting, March. Uh, actually, it wouldn't be March 17th. There's a typo in the agenda there. So I guess we do have corrections to the agenda. Right. Um, so nevertheless, uh, the minutes from the last meeting, I would look for a motion to uh, adopt. Move. And do we have a second? Second. And roll call, Joelle. Uh, Commissioner Schiavone. Yes. Commissioner Malkin. Yes. Commissioner Southridge. Yes. Commissioner Olver. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Yes. Commissioner Ishikawa. Yes. Commissioner Lilly. Yes. Commissioner Eisenhart. Uh, I and Joel, thank you for taking into account my comments from an earlier version. I appreciate that. Uh, Commissioner Lau. That's it. The motion passes. Great. So that brings us to the meat of the meeting, the real heart of what we're here to discuss. And I'll, I'll turn it over to, uh, I guess it'll be Shelly, Jean, and uh, Robin. And um, there was some real progress made actually in real time during the last meeting, some very interesting back and forth and suggestions. Um, but there was still some work around the edges that uh, the demographers wanted to do and then come back with. And then um, I don't know uh, where in this presentation you might address uh, the suggestion of Commissioner Ishikawa, but um, I assume that you, you have addressed it, Shelley. Is that in there? Um, well, addressed it in that it's a decision still to be made. Yeah. Uh, so I think it would be good for the commission to discuss that. Okay. Well, if you can point out the proper time as we get through this, um, I'll turn it over to you. And it looks like you've started Oops. screen. Wrong, wrong share. Hold on a minute. Dear Santa, I want, <laughs> to, what, what was that? Let's see, there we go. There's right. Monica. Yeah, let there. the record show, let the record show Monica's joined us. Great, fantastic. Okay, here's our third meeting of the Redistricting Advisory Commission. And uh, perhaps it's last meeting, um, especially since we are going to the board next Monday, and it would be really great if we could tell the board what you recommended. Uh, but if you're not ready, uh, there still would be time to deliberate. Um, the board, uh, as I said, is gonna meet on March 21st, next Monday. Uh, there'll also be another meeting April 1st by the board if they need to, which they probably will. And then they must adopt by April 17. Um, and then that would be in time for the County Register of Voters to implement the plan in time for the November election. Yeah, and Shelly, let's just pause here. Um, yeah. The reason for that April 1st meeting was so that we could adopt if possible, because the, um, the next actual board meeting occurs after April 17th. Right, so the board only has the 21st and, the, and April 1st to pass a plan unless they have, unless they hold yet another special meeting. Correct, thanks. Yeah, I'm sure they wanna avoid that. Okay, so just as a reminder to the commissioners and to the public, the reason we are redistricting is that the current districts are unequal in size. District three is too large by far at an 8.2% deviation. And district four is too, 
too small at 5.8%. Um, and the others are within bounds, but we uh, overall, we have to be less than 10%. And right now you're at 14%. So the key thing to remember, and we're going to talk about this coming up very soon, is we have to eliminate population from District 3. And we've identified two options. You have identified two options on how to do that. Okay, so the agenda tonight, as we see it, is that there's sort of two decisions that you need to make. One is which area to move out of District 3 to reduce its population. So we, in the past, in the last meeting, we talked about uh, the plan two, which was to move La Mesa military out of district three and it goes into district five. This is formerly Monterey uh, area and that would make Monterey in three districts. Or uh, the plan threes, which take an area immediately, uh, actually, well, east of Camino, El Estero, I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, between Sloat and Camino El Estero, and put that into District 2. And that would cause Monterey to be in two districts. So that's the first decision or a decision that you need to make. And then completely separate of that decision is to decide what the District, district 1 and 2 configuration should be. And you can mix and match this. So even though we presented plan 3A and 3B, it can be 2A and 2B. You know, it just, these uh, decisions are independent. So you have the D1, District 1 drawn initially by the redistricting advisory commission by you all at the last meeting. And then there were a couple other suggestions. One was to move Sand City out of D1. And another was to start carving out some population just west of General Moore and south of Broadway. And we'll show you those maps. If you want, we can do live mapping, especially around the D1, D2, if you want to see more configurations than what we're going to show you. And uh, we hope that you will deliberate tonight and come to a consensus. Okay, so let's talk about the move out of District 3. It's too large. You could move what we call the triangle out of District 3 and move it into District 5. 1,837 people live in that La Mesa military housing, but the number of registered voters is very small, 330 registered voters, 267 actual voters in that area. Um, so the negative is that it puts Monterey in three areas, but the positive is this group is not as engaged as perhaps other areas of Monterey because they're very, it's a transient population. And they're likely to vote. And um, mm -hmm. Shelly, is this an appropriate time for maybe Troy to um, just suggest what his email inquiry was about uh, related yes. to? Yeah. So um, Commissioner Ishikawa, do you want to kind of cut to the heart of uh, the idea or the concept that you raised here? Sure. Um, you know, I want to say something about Monterey also. It's along Highway 68, and Hidden Hills is in Division 5, even though it's not in the city limits. So Division 5 already has um, part of Monterey. The but Monterey it's not officially in Monterey, Hidden Hills. Right, but it's not in the city limits, but I believe it's... Um, limits that are due. It's already in three... There is still a market. But that's aside the point. That wasn't my question. My question was, um, is there a way to put uh, back La Mesa Village in Division 5, in at least one of the plans? Well, all of, yes, Plan 2 and any, I mean, that's sort of a separate decision. Yes, all of, all of the plans can put this triangle into District 5, La Mesa Military into 5, 
So instead of it being 3A or 3B, it can be 2A and 2B. Yeah, and I, I think, Troy, the way I read your inquiry was um, that they're very unlikely to ever run a candidate so the, the population is less engaged, but the residential population in the kind of the Bishop area or what we, you know, Pasadera through, um, you know, a York, York Road are actual living, breathing, committed family members who might at some point run a candidate. So on the one hand, you would be moving possible candidates into the same district and keeping, you know, to keep Monterey together, you'd be keeping probably, you know, non-committed, not fully registered voters um, who, you know, aren't going to make a commitment. And I, and I kind of get that. Um, I'm not here to say it's a good or a bad idea, but I, that's what I want the, the group to talk about is, you know, is, is it more of a priority to keep Monterey closer together or is it more of a priority to have uh, more options on participating residents, you know, in the, in the process later? And I don't, I don't have an opinion on that, but was that the gist of your inquiry? Um, in a way, I think I mentioned about possibly that the board of directors would become possibly um, Monterey centric. Yeah. Uh, directors living in division or one or division two, three, and five. Would all have Monterey influence. Yeah. And, and I think you highlighted the mayoral rep currently is Monterey, but that's not always the case. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was for the, the rest of the commission that that was the thrust of the, the comment received and Maybe it's something you want to talk about later, and I'll give it back to Shelley. I see a question from Commissioner Fisher. Hi, yes, I would just like to concur with what Troy is suggesting and uh, point out um, that the area east of Sloat Avenue in Monterey is very integral to Monterey. It's, a, it's an old community that's been part of Monterey for a very long time. And I'm sure there's lots of voters there. Um, whereas the, the La Mesa community is a transient community in ways. And I think it would be better to keep the East of Sloat area in Monterey. And, and Merlene, when you say East of Sloat, are we talking like Casa Verde and, and that area or? So it's kind of between well, east of Alistero, east of Alistero, I guess is what I'm saying. That, yes, that area. The uh, Oak Knoll. Or yeah. Something. So Next. here's this is the area right here from this border here and this group here. And these yeah. are these population, these are the total population in the blocks. Is oh, right. Right. By the census. Right next Avenue. to the postgraduate school, but it's a, it's a it's an old community of part of Monterey. Understand. Yeah. So, in fact, there's 1,720 people living in this area. So, similar to the 1837. So, this is why either we could do either one. And uh, you're right, there are many more voters 1,023 registered voters, 854 actual voters in the area west of Slope. Right. Because uh, the La Mesa community has its, has. Uh, connections elsewhere in the world, <laughs> most of them. Mm -hmm. uh, I see Commissioner Sh uh, Shivan, Shivoni, Shivoni, sorry. Not it's okay, everybody does that. <laughs> it's Schiavone. Um, I, I think that area where the load is definitely people who are, or, are Monterey oriented folks and they have some of the older families live there, um, although things are changing all the time. But I do think that's a Monterey Center type neighborhood in La Mesa Village. Um, I'm not sure where. Uh, I, I'm sure they are uh, into the Naval Postgraduate School, but they are transitory, more or less, coming to 
military service. Commissioner Ishikawa, are you? Did you mean to have your hand up? Did you want to? Or is that a legacy? Oh, here? damn it! Sorry. <laughs> okay, and then uh, Commissioner Malkin. Yes, I agree um, with what the previous couple of speakers said. I actually live right adjacent, practically to that area, and it Where is. Where are you, you idiot? <laughs> I'm not quite sure who that is. But Maybe we um, all need to mute if we're not. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's all attempt to mute if we can if we're not speaking. Yeah. So yeah, I just want to voice my opinion that I absolutely agree that La Mesa does not have um, as engaged community, and I know that from experience. And the Ord Grove area is where you're talking about. Um, and uh, Villa Del Monte, kind of that, it's mostly Ord Grove, absolutely is much more engaged. So I would agree. I want to mention that there's other parts of Monterey that are in District 2. So Monterey's in both District 3, all of District 3 is Monterey. So it's really Monterey centric. But then District 2 is a combination of Monterey, Del Rey Oaks, and Seaside. So we're not, it's not like we're isolating this area from the rest of Monterey. It's we're combining it with other parts of Monterey. So I don't, I just want to make that point. I don't, I'm not saying we shouldn't move it or should. But, right. Well, but I think that's be... the very reason why it should be, you know, kept together, don't you? Say again, explain that. I said, that's the very reason why it should be kept together. I, I'm, what's, what's a good argument for it not to be? Well, I'm saying we're, we are keeping that area together, but it could be with the rest of Monterey in two, or it could be with the rest of Monterey in three. Right, but in, in two, you're bringing in other cities more. Yeah, you are. Mm -hmm. Which is yeah. why I'm saying it seems like it would make more sense to keep Monterey somewhat together. I mean, it, I think at one point it was mentioned that we want to, that it looked like we were going to follow almost the Monterey city districts that have been set up. So I, I would think that this kind of aligns with that. Is it possible we can hear from Commissioner Eisenhart, who I think was the one who made the proposal to try to not trifurcate Monterey uh, and keep the triangle with either two or three um, but maybe there's some other reasons to rethink that. I don't know if, uh, right. right. Can you, can you all hear me? Yep. <clears throat> um, I have to confess I'm completely confused now <laughs> because I understand these neighborhoods we're talking about, but I also agree with commissioner Malkin. I'm, I'm not sure to what end that we're talking about them. Um, in other words, are we saying that we're going to have Monterey cover two districts that looks one way and Monterey that or, or alternatively Monterey covers two districts that looks a slightly different way? Or are we back into trifurcation land? And more importantly, because I may have confessed this to all of you before, because I'm relatively new to the peninsula, I think I need a map <laughs> to look at it. Um, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, I don't think I'm terribly helpful on this anymore. <laughs> Yes, can we look at maps <laughs> while we're saying these things instead? Yeah. So um, this was focused on one and two, but we can see this area as well. So right. District 2, this is District 2, and it includes this area of Monterey. So here's that slope area. So we're talking about this area here. Right. So in fact, if you move this area here, you're giving a little more oomph to the Monterey part of District 2 is another way of thinking about it. All of this tan area, sort of orangey tan, is Monterey. And then there'd be Delray Oaks and then uh, about a third of Seaside here. So that's what District 2 is. So you would be, it's not like you're isolating this from other Monterey areas, but it isn't in the central Monterey area, which is District 3 is completely Monterey, 100% Monterey. So does that help? I don't think we have um, 
overview map. Would I can Robin can pull up an overview map if you like. But is this sufficient to see? And we're talking about this triangle here, La Mesa military is right here. So the other option is to cut this off and put this into five. This goes into five, or we do this configuration. And, and so I understand uh, this is Commissioner Eisenhorn again, <clears throat> putting La Mesa into District 5. Uh, what's the it, can somebody help me a little bit with give me maybe a pro argument uh, for getting the trifurcation bifurcation thing right just a a pro argument and a con argument on just that issue the that that triangle uh this is commissioner fisher i i think that the easy thing to say is that the la mesa community is not that integral to monterey as other areas are because it is a more transient community and it would fit as well into five as it does any other. And and the th thank you. And, and the con argument, if you will, besides two districts versus three. Yeah, well, it, and the other pro argument that, that Troy had articulated was <clears throat> the York Road to Pasadera area that we had contemplated moving into five instead is residential, they are permanent residents, there's more voters. If they were left in division two and move the triangle into division five, then th they would create a little bit of, um, even though they have some affinity for Monterey, they're a little bit you know further up the highway 68 corridor, the weather's a little different. Um, you know, these are all the homes kind of up near the York School and um, kind of beyond Ryan Ranch. And that that might create some sort of balance, but um, certainly potential for additional candidates or public participation. So I think that was the one thing that came out of Commissioner Shikawa's email that, that I found interesting, not compelling, but, but interesting. Can I ask a question? How many people live in that Hidden Hills area? We know. Uh, you know, I have the data on a different computer about twenty feet away. Um, I'll I'll go get that and I'll report well, back. In a you know, the other the other question I had is: so is that area in the city of Monterey? Uh, Someone Hills? said no. No, I think it's unincorporated county. I think so. Well, it looks like it's white here on the map. But then there's areas that are tan. I'm going to try and pull so, up yeah, plan hidden, two. I think yeah, Hidden Hills is not on this map. Hidden Hills is currently in five. And so it's a little bit below the um, bottom of this map. So if we were to include this in, it would throw everything off then again. Well, what, so it's not really Hidden Hills. It's it's like um, the opposite side of Highway 68 from Hidden Hills. Laguna so you know, so if you're heading towards Salinas on 68, um, to your left will be Montera. And then you'll see like Boots Road um, and then the grade. And those two kind of go up the hill and that's your Hidden Hills area. You know, we're gonna have, I think Robin's gonna um, share her screen and she's gonna show a better map. Okay, but to, but to the left of 68, so north of 68 are a bunch of uh, residential development with horse names like Secretariat and Manowar and so forth. Yeah. Um, there we go, now we're starting to get it. So like that orange area below the yellow area in right in there, that's what we swapped to move the triangle into five. No, I think I think it was uh, it was not Monterey oh, no. area. It's right, it's this unincorporated white area. You're right. Yeah, correct. 
right here. So right where the cursor is going, that's the residential area. Um, Laguna Seca Golf Ranch is kind of pushed down towards 68, but behind it are some of these homes. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's Blue Larkspur, which has a bunch of uh, commercial uh, buildings right next to 68, but behind it, there's housing. And so if you were to go up York Road, which is actually probably, uh, you know, kind of hard to see in this detail, but uh, yeah, it's probably the edge of that orange um, because Ryan Ranch is pretty much all in Monterey. So <clears throat> yeah, but you can begin to see as we get closer here, there's residential roads coming off of, of South Boundary Road and, uh, and so forth. So, or right below South Boundary Road. So it was that white area that was swapped for the triangle. But I'm gonna pull myself out of this if I can, because this is really for you commissioners to kind of go back and forth on. Yeah, is, can, can I ask a question? Is district, is five the, uh, this one pulls it over towards the valley, uh, the Carmel Valley uh, area, is that correct? If you put it into five? Yes. Okay, so um, that particular type of housing over there seems to lean into some of that sort of um, community of interest kind of stuff to me. And I apologize, my phone's ringing, um, but, um, but Susan, you're right. They're, see, they're larger. They're, they're larger, larger lots, more, larger houses, and they're more kind irrigation. Of rural. Yeah. So I kind of see it as more. It could be appropriate for District Five to have that particular type of population pulled into it. I agree with her. My thought. I'll be right back. Okay, so that while we're on this map, this is map two where we have the triangle again goes into five. And then this area stays in two. The, uh, sorry, my cursor doesn't work here. It's Robbins. The other area that we were just talking about stays in two. Now, that's, and what I was trying to say earlier, the decision you make here is independent of whatever you decide to do around district one and two. Okay. So, um, which, so just wanted to point that out. So we're not saying. Can I ask you a question though? Because it yeah. seems like that map that you had. We were reversing one, the numbers. It yeah. came in city and district. I want to say one, but um, other maps show San City in two. So I'm not sure. These well, numbers are reversed. This is okay. an old map. Okay, because when we get to that point, then I think that's going to look a little different. And I'm wondering if San City, if it's in two, that's going to change that balance somewhat. Yeah, we have an option of that. Okay. That's 3A. All right. Yeah, I agree with that. That would, would change. So they are related in a sense. Uh... If you take if you take the Sloat Avenue or the Triangle and put them in the new one, or no, the new two, I'm sorry, that would then impact the size of one, or I mean of two, and then impact one. I mean, it's, uh, when, it's kind yeah, of far fetched. Yeah, somewhat related. A little it's somewhat, related. yeah. Yeah, because we're taking out parts of two yeah. if we do that. It's it's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let me go back to uh, Rob. Are, are we done with this map? Is that okay? Does anyone need to see it more? Yeah, did we decide on slowed or how are we, where are we with our conversation? All right, yeah, so let me go back to my, um, to my PowerPoint here. Let's see. Okay, so let me go back up on this. So we're in this, we've been discussing this, what area to move out of three, the triangle or the slow area. Something has to move out of three. And um, 
I was just having a map of the triangle area that we saw from last time. This is uh, La Mesa military. So we're pretty familiar with that now. Um, or this area between Sloat, here's Sloat and um, uh, Camino El Estero. So that's the issue. And I don't know if you want to, I, I'm thinking I should go on but, but you all could decide now. I guess, what's your pleasure? Would you like to come to an agreement now? Or do you want me to then discuss the other issue, which is the D1, D2 question? What would you all like? May I just move that we do move La Mesa into District 5 and keep the east of Sloat with Monterey? as at least a temporary decision, unless something else comes up. I'll second. I would second, yeah. And, and for clarity, I, I think it's actually, you know, west of Sloat. I mean, it's East Monterey-ish, but the straight line on the, right hand side of the red circle that's slope right no oh, right here this is yeah. slow right so we're actually talking about kind of west and uh south of slope yeah wouldn't that be east isn't that going towards salinas and the other is going toward the ocean well, this is west i assume Mm -hmm. Anyway, we know this is the area we're talking about. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. <laughs> okay. Between Sloat and Camino El Estero. <laughs> Between Fremont and the ocean. That's the bay. Or the bay. And just so you know, you can't see my face because I'm eating crackers because I forgot to have lunch today. So. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't know. So somebody made a motion, and there's and and I and I would second it. This is uh, Commissioner Lull, which whichever uh, point of direction we agree on um, the ethos of the the discussion, I would second. And if we, do you want us to repeat it? Well, I'm not running the this part of the meeting, so I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Yeah, um, and I think so. I think what I'm hearing is, you know, basically these three columns of, of um, neighborhoods on the, you know, kind of right side of Lake Elestero would join with the rest of the city of Monterey, which, you know, Naval Postgraduate School is a, a fairly decent dividing line from a neighborhood standpoint, which is all of this stuff kind of right under the D2 marker. Um, it does take some Monterey out of D2, which it has a, you know, a Monterey affinity with those other pieces. And then all the way up you know, to Castro around the Del Monte Golf Course and so forth. I, I guess what I'm saying is if, if we follow this motion here, then we probably in real time, Robin, you know, we may need to see what happens with the other pieces of the, the voter division. Um, as somebody said earlier, it, it sort of does have an impact, but, but I'm hearing from a couple of the commissioners that they feel that the neighborhood affinity of those you know, three columns of, of precincts or whatever these are kind of line up better with the left side rather than staying in the right side. That, it, that's what I think I heard. Uh, yeah, can, can, I, can I add a comment to that too? Mm, yeah. Just because I know the area, because I live here. Um, as you recall, I'm the one that brought the renters into the conversation. And that particular neighborhood, as well as the one on the other side of NPS, are the most um, renter heavy areas in the city other than the other side of the city where New Monterey is. So, yeah, so Esther, I think that's worth talking about a little bit more because you're talking about like the Casanova 
neighborhood right. and, and others. Yeah, can well, not can even from, Casanova, more like Villa del Monte and Laguna Grande. Can you kind of explain to the group both how the 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 neighborhood committees of the neighborhood commissions have an impact and how neighborhoods have been kind of bound together in Monterey because I think that not all of us have that information. Yeah so in the city of Monterey there are um, I believe 16 neighborhoods and each one has its own neighborhood association with a board and you're correct when you say that um, for example Villa del Monte and Laguna Grande are very, very in tune with each other because they have they share interests and concerns. They have similar crime. Um, they're lower income households, and um, they they partner up uh, on a number of things. And more recently, Ord Grove is also partnering up with them because of this the districts having been assigned the way that they have been. So I happen to be the president of the Neighborhood Association for Laguna Grande Neighborhood. So I'm, I know all my surround, the surrounding neighborhoods. So the, the most renter heavy areas are Ord Grove, where the circle is, a little bit maybe more into lower down, going towards downtown, um, but mostly Ord Grove and Villa Del Monte. That's where the density is. Traditionally, renters do not turn out to vote for these kind of things, but I will tell you that there's a significant push, given that this city is 60%, 66% renters, there is a significant push to get them out and vote and get them more educated and motivated in understanding the topics and issues. So there is some coordination and, and common interests between those neighborhoods. Does that help? Well, no, it does, but then the, the, the next conversation then is, if you're talking about the two neighborhood associations to the right of the circle being renter intensive, would it be better to take the circle and leave it where it is? Or is that creating too much of a renter block in this division two that we're looking at i you know i don't really know i mean you understand that better yeah i mean i completely agree that la mesa is an animal onto itself i mean it's not it doesn't have anything in common with anybody so i'm not sure that they should factor into the main decisions that we make with with this area um I don't know. I mean, I can just tell you what I what I just told you. Um, yeah. You know, these neighborhoods are they have common interests. They're lower income. They have them, you know, a, a solid group of dense density there of renters, which is important because if I don't know if we're going to have another district on the other side of Monterey, which is New Monterey that's where the other concentration of renters are. So I don't know that we wanna split that up or keep them together, mm -hmm. but that's just some perspective on the neighborhoods and how they kind of function with each other. I, I have a question or comment. Um, if, if we adopt that, interim motion or that motion, wouldn't we then effectively be adopting at least a portion of plan two and mm -hmm. then we're into two A and B? Is that, would that be, is that a correct observation? Yes, that would, right. Mm -hmm. So we're then back away from number three in Mr. Eisenhart's uh, original proposal last time. Right, but what we're gonna show you, we use plan three, to show you the options for districts one and two. No, I understand. Yeah. I just wanted to give one comment because um, Commissioner Eisenhardt asked for pros and cons. So one pro for keeping Mesa in um, district, uh, district three is, it is nice to use city limits just in general for the register of voters, for ballots, for things like that. 
And the register of voters is very accommodating and can do whatever you want. But just saying it's, it's just easier when you follow city limits. So that would be the main reason I would think that for, for keeping that in. Well, I also remember right. that somebody made the comment in the last meeting, and I heard it on tape, I, I wasn't there, but uh, that uh, people who live in La Mesa do, do um, uh, orient to the Naval Postgraduate School, which is in Monterey. And so there is some, some affinity to Monterey, not as strongly as perhaps some of the Renner neighborhoods or some of the other places, but nevertheless, it is part of the city limits of Monterey. Yeah, this is Commissioner Eisenhardt. I'm, I, I do realize we have a motion that's been seconded and um, to do something sort of tentative, but I, is it okay if we talk about this just a little more? On my behalf, absolutely. Yeah, just because what I'm struggling with is, <clears throat> and I, I'm looking at this, uh, this circle here, um, I, I think um, we're, we're, essentially we're talking about this area. I don't know if you can all see that. Um, maybe we're not. We're all looking at the red. Yeah, okay, uh, that's fine. Um, what, I'm, what I'm struggling with is, I'm, I'm listening to the other commissioners saying that this area in the red, um, you know, it, it, it's sort of a feeling, right? It's like, what did those folks who live there do they identify themselves? It reminds me of that old Star Trek episode from the 60s where the one white face on the white side, black on the other, no black on one side, right on the other. We're, we're asking a question here that I don't know that can be answered, which is, did the folks in that circle uh, identify as D2 or D3? And of course, that, 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 that's an artificial creation. I, I don't think anybody would say one way or the other. The next question is, when we say they identify, they probably identify as Montereyans. I mean, Monterey is in both of those districts. So I, I'm confessing I'm not following the logic. I'm not following the logic why it would even make a difference if the circle were in D2 or D3 for uh, the one logic I was following was, is, is you know, the other, the other consideration was, well, hey, they're mostly renters. Now let's take a look at that demographic. So I, I see that as a demographic issue. If you're telling me people in, those circ in that circle are mostly renters, now you got my attention. That's a demographic. We got it, you know, we're, right? Um, but if it's just a sense of how somebody in, identifies, I, I'm not sure, is that a factor? And so that's my question, and I'm, I'm, I'm being open and honest. I don't understand it. Yeah, no, that's a great question, because I think what we've been talking around for you know, a good 20 minutes is trading the triangle, which is primarily La Mesa, the York Road, Laguna Seca, Golf Ranch, Pasadera area, and this circle. And... I don't think it's completely clear to everybody what happens if you do what. I, I think one thing I've, I've heard of that we almost all agree on is La, La Mesa can be moved anywhere because they're not active participants. Although just recently somebody said they probably identify more with Monterey because they're all, not all, but many Naval Postgraduate School uh, folks and others have jobs in town and, and so forth. But, but I think we've got these three areas related to this discussion that somehow we need to nail. Well, can I say something? Go for it, Susan. Oh, I'm just thinking of population wise. I think it was a convenient way to talk about a particular segment of population that kind of matched up by the numbers. And if the triangle looked better as a piece of the other district so that you wouldn't be trifurcating Monterey, that was the issue at hand. So where would you move uh, in order to have a bifurcate instead of a trifurcate? So it looked kind of easier or 
you know, compared to a, a more denser actual urban population that's part of the city proper and a ice, more isolated community that's kind of set aside from that um, with all the other characteristics as a population, that it was just seemed kind of somewhat easy to take that triangle and move it to the other district rather than as much of the city proper. That was just my observation. I mean, we obviously can do lots of different things. It seems like there's a lot of flexibility and or to a degree some flexibility, but and as Shelley pointed out, having contiguous borders that match up city boundaries is a nice thing. It works well. Um, so we just have to decide. And I, and I don't think we have to decide right now because we're gonna look at two and one and a lot of this other stuff's gonna shake out, especially in population. And if we do some map playing, which I'd like to do some map playing um, and kind of see how does this look and then compare it to that, you may find that that looks better here and then moving it back over to two because there might be some shuffling around in two that would accommodate that staying in three and then moving the military families over to five. So I'm just thinking- Well, how, how about this? Um, why don't we take the motion and a second with the permission of the motion maker to put it in the parking lot, you know, as a parking lot issue as we continue through this and then we'll come through and we'll pick up all these big issues together. And that was- You're muted. Commissioner yeah, Fisher, you're muted. You're muted. I have my hand up for a while. Oh, we could move. So we could, uh, my intention was that this would be just exactly that, a parking lot item, somewhere, something that would allow us to move on to the rest of it. If we have two more hands up. Uh... Commissioner, over. Sorry. Um, sorry. Um, my point has been made. I was going to say that uh, I don't think we need to vote on the motion now. We can move on and come back. And as the person, who, if the, the person who made the motion, the person who seconded the motion now support that, I think we can do it. And Commissioner Malkin? Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I just want to make one final point on the demographics. Um, the La Mesa area, uh, outside of that specific little area that is La Mesa, that whole, anything else outside of La Mesa really identifies with Alta Mesa and Monta Vista neighborhoods. And they all have much more similar interests. So you might wanna keep that in mind, just like what I'm pointing out with this circle, having similar interests with the adjacent neighborhoods there. This is a lower, lower income section of the city when we're talking about the circle over to the seaside border. And La Mesa area is a much more affluent um, area and properties. That's all I wanted to point out, but I don't disagree we should table this. Okay, so I'm gonna move on then. Um, all right, so now the, the other decision before you is the exact boundary between districts one and district two. So we have three options we're gonna show you. What we are calling just claim plan three is pretty much how you drew the plan at the last meeting. It includes, it extends to the seaside city limit in the south. It includes Sand City, it follows Yosemite to Broadway and General Jim Moore Boulevard. And I'll show you a map in a minute, it's very clean. Then it was asked, well, what if we took Sand City out of uh, District 1? And there are 327 people in Sand City, we can do that, it lowers the deviation. I did not see an area of 300 people to move back into District 1. 
which I think was the original intent. It's like, well, if we move Sand City out, maybe we could put more of Seaside in, but there wasn't any obvious 300 people to move into from Seaside, but that could be something where we look at the mapping to do that. Uh, so then the third option is plan 3B, where we were starting to play with last time with live mapping. And uh, there's some interesting, um, a map with African-American concentrations that I wanna show you. And we followed that uh, to carve out some a, a districts, part of um, district one to district two. So I'm gonna show you those three options now. So first is just the plain boundary that you all drew. It's very clean. It starts with Sam City, goes along Military Ave, Yosemite, Broadway, um, General Jim Moore, it says Masco, but it's um, General Jim Moore. Um, and then the seaside city limit. So very clean boundaries here. So that's the nice thing about this, um, this plan. And here is overlaid on this plan are the uh, Latino concentrations. And so you can see that we've really captured the Latino population in this area, in this district one. And what's very interesting is this is the African-American concentration and you see it's right in that neighborhood we were looking at to possibly carve out population. I think it's important not to split this area here. So it's not split here in this, in this district, district one. So I think that would be okay, but I wouldn't want to cut into this area. I would want to keep it intact. So that's what we're going to do a little later. But I think it's okay, it's intact here, but that might inform whether you want to keep it in district one or move it to district two. Okay, so that was your, the, what we had come up with before. Now, if we move 3A, move Sand City, out of district one into district two. And this is basically what it looks like following the seaside city limits and then going along Sand City. And this is an awkward census block, so don't worry about that um, on that. Uh, and otherwise it keeps things the same. But I did not see like just a little piece here of 300 people to move to replace Sand City population, it's such a small population here. Yes. How much is the population in that wedge up there that if you were going up uh, Co Avenue up to General Jim, and there's a wedge there that is a large African or American community up there. How many people are up in there? Do you know? Uh, we can look at that at live mapping, but there's like this whole area here. Is this what you're asking, this whole area? Yeah. There's a lot of people. So we could, I tried that. We, it's it's too many. Just a lot. Yeah. Deviation. Okay, here's my other question then. If you were to drop out some of the south side of Salinas that had dropped out before in the original mapping, it came up to Kimball, I think. Yes. Does that help in adding maybe more African American uh, residences back into one? And then I had another question is, is that stacking? Where do you talk about liquidating votes or pulling votes together? And when I look at the map, that's a Latinx map, along with a fairly high population of African Americans, I could see District 1 having a minority representation, possibly minority coalition that could elect candidates. And I'm wondering about how to pull them back in to one somewhat. So I don't know well, if I'm it, making any uh -huh. sense. Yeah, I mean, it's true, this area does, is not uh, Latinx or African American here. It's but Caucasian. It did, yeah, and it did use the city limits. So that was the only reason we did that. But if we wanted to maximize Latinx, we would use Kimball. Okay. And, um, but even if we drop this and we drop Sand City, there's just a lot of people here. So right. we can do this with live mapping and look at it, but it, um, we would have to divide this area. You'd still have to divide it up somewhere. Yeah. 
you'd have 22 or 3,000 people or more up there. Wow. Maybe. Really? Well, we can look at that specifically. Well, and, 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 you know, keep in mind, you know, Sand City, which we think of as a cohesive uh, entity, you know, there's a lot of live work. Um, there's a few single family residential, but, you know, under California law, it wouldn't even be a city mm -hmm. today because the current requirement is a minimum of 500 registered voters. So it's, you know, in, and I honor Dave Pendergrass, you know, long-term mayor was a good friend, but, you know, there's a few places in California, um, city of Vernon outside of LA that you just look at, sometimes you go, what do we do with you? Because they're not, you know, there is a strong community because the 60 or 70 people mm -hmm. who've bonded together through all the years to keep that city moving are very cohesive, but it's not, you know, it's not a large scale population. So it's kind of like, you know, you have to think a little bit about who do they fit with? Who are they, you know, affinity with, but um, it's difficult. Okay. I see Commissioner Oliver. Um, this is a question. I, I have no opinion on this. I, as I looked at this, I wondered if there is some community of interest of coastal communities when it comes to the issues of water. Yeah, I would say um, as the peninsula were very cohesive, individually among these voter divisions there there's neither affinity nor division um, we're kind of you know as a group as a whole all five divisions affected the same way so um, there is difference between division five and a little bit of what we've been talking about with division two as you start pushing up the valleys you know higher temperatures higher heat bigger homes bigger lawns, a difference in how they approach water use and water conservation, but not enough, I think, to drive this process. It still comes back to social justice issues and neighbor, you know, neighborhood continuity and that kind of thing. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go on to um, the next map then. So this was 3A taking Sand City out. And then 3B is we look to reduce uh, District 1 a little bit because it is quite, uh, has quite a high deviation. But it is still within your legal limits to do that. So here uh, we have 3B overlaid on the African American concentration. And you can see we go down Yosemite and then Soto and Sonoma. And um, I think this is. Um, I get now if this is still Mescal, but uh, gets over to General Jim Moore here. So um, this would have the advantage of keeping this with this other population here that is somewhat African American, a little less African American, but somewhat African American. Um, I do want to say that the overall population percent of African Americans is still tiny. So even though we consolidate this, it's still tiny for all of District 2. So we're putting this area and combining with all of District 2, and they end up not making uh, just a that's, tiny percentage. Yes. That's, that's one of my concerns, because I think their voting power may be more uh, by being absorbed into 2. They'll be diluted. Diluted. But that's the word. I was going to say the same thing. And yeah. you know, so historically, you know, even though the, you know, there's a Latinx um, majority now or, or relative to African American, you know, historically it's been identified with leadership from yeah. the African American community, the churches, um, the community centers who do things. Yeah. Um, 
And I do think they get diluted by being thrown into two because, you know, the, that portion of Monterey and, you know, ignore the white uh, space to the right because that's all just open space in Fort Ord. But, you know, culturally and politically, I think it does take a swipe at the history. It's not the demographics that are shown in the numbers, but it's what's been shown historically. And, and wouldn't I agree, that, Dave. pardon me, wouldn't that also um, be affected by the renting situation? Wouldn't there be more renters in that group and shouldn't they find themselves in, with more affinity to number to group one? They didn't I agree. Sure that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I they agree, didn't. especially that area where Del Monte High is. That's a lot of renters in there. More of the other people have their own homes, I think, up in that other area where they rent homes. But I just think it would liquid uh, dilute their vote so much. And I mean, you know my issue, I'm trying to keep Seaside as much Seaside as I can. And I do think that what Day, uh, Chair Stolt had to say is very appropriate that even though the population numbers are not high, the culture and the history and the tenor of Seaside very much has a African-American influence that's fairly large. Yeah, I agree. And also the African-American population are solid voters. They turn out and vote all the time. Hispanics are very questionable because we have, you know, some some documentation problem and people that are not comfortable turning out to vote or even being counted in the census. It's already been established that this census undercounted the the minorities, particularly the Hispanic population in this country, because we were doing it during a pandemic, and when people were worried about their their status as immigrants. So I think it's important that we do make sure that the African-American um, community is, is really kept intact and probably a good thing to put with the, the, the Hispanic community. I think so, because there could be a coalition of interests, a community of interests that's fairly solid once that's- Yeah, I mean, they- That's they all have, together. They just elected their first council member that's Hispanic in, in Seaside. That's right. And when well, that actually, happens, I mean, I, I, I learned that Seaside's 44% Hispanic. Right. That doesn't mean that they all turned, that 44% turned out because the, the, the African American community are solid voters. But it's, it was enough to, you know, he worked the, the Hispanic community and they did turn out for him. So they are ramping up and getting more interested in their community and understanding their power of voting. Okay, well, it sounds like then we do not want to do anything like this 3B. So that's good to take it off the table because we were just you know playing around with that at the end and we didn't have this African-American centric uh, perspective. Um, so with this, then we don't want to do this and we can take um, that off the table. There was one thing there that was good and that, that little squiggle that's below the orange area seemed to be a good maneuver because the area to the right of it is, is much more affluent, I think, than the rest of it. You mean and so if you wanna make the, the whole thing for district one more cohesive, I would say you keep that squiggle, but bring the orange part back into one. So it would go along Broadway, yeah. down General Moore, squiggle, and back down to General Moore. It would be a little well, awkward. Keep, that would, that's my suggestion. Yeah, keep in <laughs> mind, Merlene, that the, the lighter orange is also, uh, you know, I won't say predominant, but is also African-American. So it's anything with the orange shade, um, or not the yellow, but the orange and the deep orange, you know, have have some affinity, if you will. So uh, you'd still be leaving out that 
large orange swath from Broadway. I'm, I'm only North. knowing. I'm only knowing. I've been up on Maiden Court, and it looked more affluent. That's all. That's all. No, and, and and you're right. As you get to the homes right below General Jim Moore, like the hillside homes, you, you're absolutely correct. Where the squiggle is. Susan, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was just going to ask if we did try to pull in that African American community area there and cut back on the south side of town where yeah. that is a fairly uh, well off area and they seem to be more dovetailed into Delray Oaks. I mean, they're right on the border of Delray Oaks and the housing and the population is a little bit more similar to the Delray Oaks area. If that could back up and go towards the north a little bit. Would that accommodate some of that population then up there on the hill? That's what I'm wondering if we could play that with line mapping, but I don't know if the population down on the south end is a lot less dense. I don't know. It didn't seem to be that less dense, but. So that's yeah. the original district two, plan two rather, the original plan two, and we can start with that or look at that again, if you all want. Um, I see some other questions, so I just wanted to add. Right. Especially if Sand City is eliminated, that will take 300 and some people out. I, I was gonna say, could we even go as far north as Coe and then the general Jim Moore Avenue and just put all that in District 1 and take Sand City out and then that go all good. the way up to Hillby? Does that make sense to kind of what Commissioner Giovanni said, uh, you know, to push up and push over. And it seemed to keep that all intact. Okay, we can try that on the live mapping. I don't think that's going to be enough, but he'll, going up to Hillby will help. Well, I, I'm just asking Kimball or Hillby and then going up to, you know, and then putting in one over to Coe, up to Coe and over to, uh, you know, the Jim Moore Avenue. So Stephen, so you're suggesting the horizontal Hispanic. line at Hillby, and then picking up the wedge, the wedge up uh, there between Yosemite yeah. and yeah, okay, yeah. It's Military yeah. Avenue, I think. That may, may, may no sense. I don't know, but yeah, I think that's military because the on the other side is is the high yeah, and and Co and military are parallel for a while, and then Co goes north. Mm -hmm. uh, around the high school and everything so yeah it's it's it is kind of military and just to be clear we do have as attendees the current district directors from both of these districts and while i am sure they have strong opinions about everything that you are all discussing for now, it's for you to discuss and not hear their opinions. Um, we hope to get out of here tonight with a recommendation. But you know, ultimately, the, you're right on the issues that they're going to want to discuss. So, um, but I, I don't think we should reach out to them for uh, much input on communities of interest or the boundaries, even though I'm sure they're champing at the bit to tell you some things. So, sorry about that. I just wanted to bring up this Latinx map again, because here's Hilby um, and here's Kimball. So that's why we, we use Kimball. But um, even if we use Hilby, we're still keeping the, the really uh, concentrated Latinx community together. But just to give you this context. Okay, we're almost done with this. Um, it sounds like we want to go to live mapping soon. Um, this, I should have showed you this earlier. This is just a zoomed in version of this, but we're not going there. So we're going to keep this area. Uh, I think all of those were very sound arguments. Um, this basically just says the Latinx percentages are very similar between all these different plans. Good. Uh, yeah. And uh, I just wanted to show you this. This is where we, um, 3B moves 
the African American population into District Two, and you can see it just it just increases it from five point four to six point five percent. So I think it's also um, wise what you were saying that they're going to be diluted if they move into District Two. Okay, and here's just the for your documentation purposes. I won't go through this, but just know that uh, District One is five point one percent which is pretty high for, for the district, but overall it's 8.4%. So you would be okay if you did this, but it's just populous for a district. And uh, Sand City, removing Sand City puts the population of District 1 down to 3.5% deviation. So it lowers the deviation to 6.8%. And 3B is pretty off the table. And so now um, it's up to you if you want us to do some live mapping or you want to talk about things for a while and if you want us to pull up a map or not. So I'm going to stop sharing for now. And I make a comment, I'd, I'd like to see some um, mapping, you know, along the lines of to uh, relative the African-American community to um, not dilute it as much if that's possible. I mean, yeah, maybe, it's, I maybe it's not, but um, I think that's an issue and, and it is a traditional um, enclave there, so to speak, that um, <clears throat> if we can preserve that, we probably should try. Mm -hmm. Maybe Robin, you could pull up plan two, the original plan two and um, we can show the commissioners what the populations are like, because in that, especially in that wedge area, because um, there's a lot of people <laughs> in the wedge area. Yeah. I turn on the block populations here. Is that the right and zoom? You're looking for? That's it. Yeah. Yes, that's the area. Um, and I'm just trying to remember how much deviation do we get? We get like um, with this plan, it's 6.3. Yeah, I'm just saying like any particular district can be um, like how much, like a can we go up to even a thousand off of this? I think so. I mean, even if we went north to Hillby or to uh, the, the street below and took out Sand City, that might help. That would know. help, yeah. Well, like that, that the line there now, yeah. It's, it's a, a long Kimball right now. <clears throat> yeah, Kimball. I mean, Kill Kimball. Yeah. Yeah. If we took out, if we went up to Hillby, we might be able to take in the wedge. There's a lot of people in there. Look at that. There's uh, I'm just eyeballing it. So we might be able to take the wedge if you're willing to go up to Hillby. Can we see what it looks like? Yeah. So, Robin, could you do that? And what it turns into, because I'm kind of a visual person. Yeah. Yeah, because it's currently drafted, you've basically separated Delmonte Manor from a population right. of African Americans in half that wedge. Exactly. So and then take Sand City out of right. what and give it to yeah. you? Yeah, you have to because it says 10.11. <laughs> yeah, give that to two. No problem. <laughs> but really what we're going to do is we're going to take out um, Kimball to Hillby. And yeah, that's going to make a big difference. This is going to become the least of of uh, problems because every city and their general plan has a sphere of influence. I'm sure Sand Cities, I haven't seen it. Sand City would include part of Seaside and Seaside would include part of Sand City and it goes on and on. So where's the deviation 
No. Uh, Robin, I think you need to keep that little triangle on the other side mm -hmm. of, um, East of Fremont. Fremont. Okay. Yeah. So just take yeah, it Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. See what that See. looks like. So how does yeah, that so that works. <laughs> that would work. Right. And what's the deviation now? Negative zero. Nothing. <laughs> no, it's good. Really yeah, good. The same. Because I mean, you could put sure. Sand City back if you wanted. Really? I don't know. Yeah. Want to try it? Sure. Yeah, let's do I, I, that. That might help too if you put it back in, and it might help to configuring what they need at that point. Because it sort of feels like it belongs. But didn't well, you say there's a business looks district? One, looks more yeah. like an island. Yeah, I mean, you I could probably wait. put it back in if it works and you don't have too much of a deviation. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, let me weigh in on that one too because they are more closely intertwined with property tax sharing agreements, sales tax sharing right. agreements. Not always happy with each other, yeah. but but their <laughs> Will interests, they pay us? Oh. <laughs> right, but their interests are far more mutual than San City is with any other entity. And when you get Campus Town, you know Campus Town developed and yes. Front Gate developed, they're even tighter. Mm -hmm. So if you can keep San City there, I think it makes sense. Yeah. So, so Robin, go ahead and accept that. So where are we now? So it, we're good at 1% and zero. So it's really quite good. Yeah. I'm happy. And on an unrelated Me issue, too. it would not split the Seaside Municipal uh, Water Department right. that the previous map did. Yeah, this <laughs> looks good, guys. I like this. Yep, I agree. And there's a few little blocks of sand, of seaside that we should pick up with that too. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just to go along the seaside city limit. Yeah. The lakes. Do you want to see the uh, Latinx or the Hispanic? I mean, the um, African American. American How about Latinx would be good if you have that easy. And then I'll take these off, so. Yeah, that's good. That still looks great. What's that percentage, do you know? Yeah, up top we have it. Um, the plan deviation? No, no the all. percent Hispanic. Um, like, especially um, registered voters. Do we have that? Can you move it over? Oh, oh uh, no, we don't have it. Anyway, it's We okay. just have, yeah. Yeah. It's only going to be half anyway. Yeah, it's 50. It looks like 56%, 55.9%. And what about African American? I think you've gotten almost all of it back in. Yeah, can we look at that? Yeah, it's a little higher, 7 Yeah, that's about it. Good. Yeah, great. Good, I like that. It gives Is them there a stronger anyone voice. Is there anyone that's not happy with this? Okay, great. So now we get to go back to the other part. The, um, or do we wanna pause for a minute? Is everybody- Can we give this a name so I can refer to it? I'm sorry. What, what are we? We're going to call this the C plan, whatever this is. Okay. Two C or three. C. <laughs> okay, sorry, it just helps me. Plan C. Okay. Well, if if we pause, is the only remaining issue the slope versus the triangle versus York at this point? Yes. 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 Okay. So this map shows what would happen if the triangle goes to District Five. And sloat is the boundary. And maybe turn off the, um, yeah, good. So now we're back to cities. Okay. I feel like you have two oh, fine choices. Either choice would be good for you all. 
Well, if we were to go back to um, the original proposal, of Mr. Eisenhart, and put uh, the triangle back in Monterey, then we would uh, put into into two. Then we would have to put El Estero into three. Is that? Am I correct? No, we would take we if we took. Um, La Mesa, the triangle, and put it back in three. Then we have to take the area between Sloat and uh, El Estera and put that into two. Does that work? It does, but then we also have to take some part of two and put it into five, which is that unincorporated area, that rural-ish unincorporated area would go which, into five. Which and some if we earlier... that, that would satisfy Troy's uh, yeah. inquiry. But would the numbers work? Yeah, that's what plan the three plans do. This is Commissioner Eisenhart. Is it is it feasible to see what that looks like as we did with uh, districts one and two on a live map? Yeah, Robin's doing it now. So we're moving the tri triangle into three. Hey, I just want to say I'm, I'm 64 years old and I want to go back to college and get my GIS degree. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with you. <laughs> I don't know if I did this move, this change here correctly. Wait, is that, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you did. Yeah, that's Following good. the city limits, yeah. Okay, and then this area right here goes from three to two? Yes. You might need to zoom in. And do so, we follow Fremont here? Yeah. And yeah, that's that's what no, you were talking about earlier. I think stop right. there. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's start, okay. You know what is funny, because I sometimes do the live mapping too. I always feel embarrassed that I'm taking so long, but you guys are, most people are very fascinated to watch it. <laughs> I love it. You all are patient, which is nice. Yeah, there's an added little uh, uh, delay when we're on Zoom with the software. So and thank you maybe, for your patience. Yeah, do you want this little area? Probably, yeah. Not sure, but nope. Okay. How's that look? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, and then so we just have to. Yeah, two yeah, is at eight percent. Right, and I'm pretty right. sure that area that you just touched is all brush between the on ramp and the off ramp, so not a big deal. Okay. Yeah, and you know, one thing is the register of voters likes to um, adjust plans when there's no voters just to make it uh, more economical for you all. So they don't have to do ballots, print ballots that no one's gonna use. Yeah. So uh, we always try and put in a little resolution that they should do minor changes to the plan as they implement it. Yeah, so that would be the area that's moving to five. So now okay. everything is uh, is fine. So if those numbers work, can we hear from Esther again about where the Lake El Estero neighborhood went and how do you feel about that? Um, it's kind of hard. Can you um, zoom in? To make it bigger? There you go. I think this is fine. And we do have a neighborhood layer that I can turn on. I don't know. I mean, you are splitting Ord Grove neighborhood a little bit, but the park does that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's not, that shouldn't be a problem. Right. And the Del Monte Beach neighborhoods are in there too, so. I, I think this is fine. I, I, I do believe that those outer lying 
areas belong with the other district because they have much more um, similar characteristics in the properties and in the, the residents. And, and so zooming in again on the very left side of this district two, that's the park, right? Yes. Okay, so that we're not really splitting a neighborhood, so to speak. Right, the park does that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I'm just gonna and that's on. kind of how the city set up the districts too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, here's the park. What is this census block in there? Can we just not take the park? Exactly. You mean move this back? This yeah, district? just this. Yes. Yeah, just the park part. Uh, let me just turn this neighborhood off so I. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, the right. Locks. Just keep coming up, Aguajito. Right. 13 people live there. Oh, well, that makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. It does. You know, that so cemetery, can... people are dying to get in there. Yeah, they're, they're probably dead bodies. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I know. <laughs> it's getting late. <laughs> We're okay, Robbins, say yes to that. Oh, I, yeah. Okay, let me, let me just fix that while you, while you all continue talking and. Okay. What does that make people feel better if the park is on the other side? Only yeah. because of the way the things were colored and it makes it look okay. like you're not splitting anything. Right? When you put the neighborhoods in. Yeah. It's going into three, correct? Yes. Okay. That's better. And I'll turn back the I'll turn the neighborhoods back on so you can see what that looks like. Yeah, and anybody who lives lives around here or has seen that I, I don't believe the numbers that are assigned to the precincts here but you know perhaps I don't think there's there might be a caretaker residence on the cemetery or something else <laughs> this is um commissioner Eisenhardt I'd like to hear from commissioner Fisher because um I, I want to hear more about concerns you have about what we, we're doing right now, because you, you had some interesting thoughts about this neighborhood. Uh, I'm fine with what's been done. I think this looks just lovely. I'm, I'm happy. Boy, I sure wish that our city districts were this easy to agree with, because <laughs> that was not pretty and this is really much easier and pleasant <laughs> so do we i'm just at uh, commissioner eisenhardt speaking again the little tiny bit of mauve there in um uh, the alta mesa area and um a little bit of um lime green there. yeah are we gonna push those back into division three yeah we can move the, this block right here yeah and then the lime area by the water North of you can't move that one because that's a big one. You'll see, I think. Oh, oh really? Yeah, yeah I'll, let's see. I'll Robin, you've got, finish. um, yeah, three. Put three there. No, I think that's windows on the bay. It's predominantly empty. Yeah. Park. Oh, it's, it's volleyball. Well, there's a, there's a little, there's a development of uh, right on the beach. Right. Right. Oh, uh, oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And they are, they're part of, they're identified as part of Del Monte Beach. So, so the so lime green part. Okay. One census block yeah, that we saw. Yeah, there are more. Yeah, that's one big census block. I see. And that okay. end, that group is more over on the right. Yeah. Right. It looks like a golf course right above the line, boundary line. But no, that's, 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 that's part of 
window on the bay that um, the city of Monterey had the mm -hmm. foresight to buy up private properties, including like a Honda dealership and others, right. and then down to open up the spaces. It's all simple, just open parkland. Right. Yeah. Now, Robin, yeah, there's that area. Oh, so see, that's it's a yeah, weird it's, census tract. Yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. And it's got, it looks like it's got zero. All right. Yeah. So the <laughs> register of voters will do something simple with that. And again, this is Commissioner Eisenhardt. I would very much also like to hear from uh, some of the other commissioners. I mean, uh, Commissioner, <coughs> excuse me, Olver and Ishikawa. Um, I, I, I want to come back to the comments you had and, and check in with both of you because I, I feel like I might have missed some of your points if, if, if we're trampling on them. I, I hope we're not. I, I'm uh, Commissioner Olver here. I think this is elegant, uh, a, a great solution. Um, this is Commissioner Ishikawa. I'm still a little bit concerned, even though I can see the demographics of the um, section that's on Highway 68 as part of Division 5 instead of Division Two. You mean three. Okay, so you mean you mean up by Ryan Ranch, correct? Yes. Yes. So let's go towards, oh, towards to the right, the, Robin. Yeah, towards the you right. Know, yep, okay. Right. It might there. be helpful to make a decision about that area if you put the income map back up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Which layer did you want to see? Income. Income. Because uh, Highway 68 during that area is fairly high income. I don't have that layer available right now. I'm okay. sorry. But it helps me actually. Um, I, I, they probably have a more of a similar mindset than say an identity of being in Monterey. I was trying to avoid a Monterey-centric um, board of directors, possibly, with having a director from divisions two, three, and five with Monterey residences. I see. So how do you feel about what we're looking at right now? It's OK. What this has Monterey in, in two districts only. No, because there's Monterey that's un, um, unincorporated. Yeah. Along the, the Highway triangle. 68 corridor. Oh, I see. I see. Those darn Montereyans. <laughs> well, if it's unincorporated, how can it be Monterey? They still have a 93940 zip code and they still say Monterey. Okay. Yeah, That's but where it comes from. Although a I, lot of the folks up the valley have Carmel addresses, right. and they don't identify right. as Car Carmelians, Carmelites, whatever. Well, well, that's an identity, but they wouldn't think, vote for Monterey City Council, correct? No. No. Right. So, so from a political point of view, they they're uh, they're not um, voting for. Uh, representation on the council that we, you know, that uh, identifies them as Monterey folks. And, and, and that's a really services. good point because this is about voter districts or voter divisions, um, just trying to get it right. And yeah, Tama, that's a that's a really good observation because I I do think Stephen's right that they might identify a little bit with Monterey because that's their orientation, but. They are unincorporated, so their service is coming from the county. Right. Um, their climate's different. You know, you don't get the fog. They do look up the hill at Hidden Hills and identify a little bit geographically with that area. Right. So, yeah, And they're so fairly bad. wealthy, and they have very large homes, a lot of them, and large lots. You're talking about water use is different. Water use patterns are probably very different. Although some, some are on wells, aren't they? Some are on wells. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, and um, there are quite a few renters in those properties. Yeah. Well, 
not many are on wells um, in this little area we're talking about. Hidden Hills is a standalone system with its own single well, and then that's on the south side of 68. And then what we're talking about in the York Woods area or the uh, Pasadera to uh, all the horse themed names, they're primarily, that's what's called the Bishop service area. And they're actually primarily served by Cal-Am, uh, not individual wells, but there's individual wells for the Laguna Seca Golf Ranch, Pasadera, there's individual treatment, but most of the residential homes are served by an interconnected distribution system. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I have the income map. Do people still wanna see that? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see it just in reference to what we're talking about here. Okay. No, the detail is... Uh... So I'm not sure, I guess the area we're moving is right here, Dark potentially green. moving. Into, from two into five. I can zoom in a little bit. So we've cut off the bottom part, but it was all the same color. See, that's a fairly high income area going down 68 here. Yeah. They it's a little bit different interest of community is what I'm trying to point out that mm -hmm. most of what's in two, or rather, yeah, most of what's in two or three. So that makes it a little more um, palatable to move that from two to five. Yeah, I think, I think, so. I think it does. And keep in mind that the, okay, so as we're looking at this map, north of 218 is actually north of 68 also. So the yellow line is 68 heading east to west to Salinas, right? Right. So the piece you're talking about with the income levels, we don't care what happens after the blue line, because that's irrelevant to us. And to the left of the little slight white line that still looks like there's income level. So let's go north of, yeah, thanks Robin, north of the yellow road and now go to the left of that little white road, that's York Road. So this dark green space right here doesn't really exist. That's Ryan Ranch. There's really no residential there. So while it falls into the median household income estimate, huh. there's nobody there. Um, there may be one day on the very, 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 very left-hand side, if in fact Delroy Oaks um, put in you know, 20 housing units or something. But um, so when you see dark green, the only piece of it that's in the district in that area is to the right of the little white line, which is York Road, all the way to the blue line, which is a district boundary. The other piece doesn't matter. So from the standpoint of keeping, you know, economic similarity together, it could make sense. I don't know. I have other issues with concentrating wealth, but this is not a geopolitical conversation. This is a election conversation. Okay. So it's established that area that we're moving is high income. Potentially moving from two to five is would be high income. Yeah, they're more similar than what we were looking at before. They, they don't fit in with, with the other district. I mean, how would they other than, you know, just on paper? So I think Robin, maybe you can show that plan again that we were working on. And it's, I don't know, it seems like you may have come to a consensus on this map. If so, I would suggest we call it plan four. 
just to get rid of complicating things. Well, and interestingly, it, it does address Director Ishikawa's, I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner Ishikawa's um, concern or comment about, you know, potentially more candidates, uh, Monterey centric and so forth, so. Huh. Oh, you did put the income on here, huh, Robin? Great. You know, Commissioner Eisenhardt speaking, looking at the income filter, um, it really does look like we're accomplishing something, you know, quite profound in what we've done with District uh, one. So Mark, are you saying meaning empowering them to have a voting district? Oh my God, yes. Yeah, yeah. okay, I get you. I get you. Oh my God, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if that um, level of, as you call it, empowerment, uh, I mean, talk about, you know, a lot of um, representative muscle, you know, there's only five districts, you know, uh, that that's that's really quite impressive. Um, seems to me. And you know, just for all of our edification too, as you go over to Division Four, you know, it looks like we haven't touched it. We haven't done very much with it. Um, there's that big dark green high income swath. Right. They don't. They don't vote very much. These are their second homes. I mean, there's a lot of first homes, but um, what we're really talking about is the city of Pacific Grove in that case. So, you know, let's not get carried away with how big it is or how dark green it is. And that uh, four point four five percent deviation on Division Two. Um, you're I'm speaking to our demographers. You're very comfortable with that. Well, it's the total is below 10, so sure. you're good. Yeah, the plan deviation is 7.7%. I mean, if we took Sand City out, no, we can't do that. We can't do that because I don't make too, too big. Right. Yeah. So we couldn't do that even if we wanted to. So we got over two percentage points of deviation to spare. And, and, and in your experience, that, <laughs> that, well, I'm just asking in your experience, Shelley, that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, an accomplishment? It really doesn't matter. Um, people think they ought to have a very low deviation, but that's not essential. And just anything below 10% is fine. It's nice to have it a bit lower, but it's not necessary. I think Commission Eisenhardt was saying, well, can we do even more? No, 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 I, 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 no, 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 no. Actually, to the contrary, I was just looking for okay. exactly that uh, confirmation um, that you, the assuaging that, that, that you just did. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm good. To, this is Commissioner Eisenhardt. I, I don't want to in any way stifle a debate. Actually, I find all of this interesting. I'm good to go. Um, and um, I would second any motion to approve this plan, but I'm not going to bring the first, only because I know that others may want to talk about it. Well, uh, Commissioner Oliver has her hand up. Uh, I just have my League of Women Voters hat on with respect to the deviation. And this is a 10-year plan. And the reason we have a 14% deviation today is communities have grown at different rates. So the goal of redistricting is to get within a reasonable range so that people are more or less equally represented. And I believe that this plan uh, fills that bill. This is Commissioner Malkin. I'll say it again. I wish the city districting was this clean. And, and when we went through that process that it was so considerate of the representation of the communities of interest. I wanna thank this group because this has been 
the easiest I've ever could have imagined. And on that note, if nobody has a problem with it, I will make a motion to accept this map as is. I will could second I, that. Could I ask some uh, uh, Commissioner Ishikawa if he's comfortable with this decision? Yes. Okay, great. And, and can I ask the motion maker to just slightly revise her motion to say this is the recommendation that the commission would like to make to the district board for adoption? And, and can we call it? And can we call it uh, as it's been suggested? Uh, plan four. Yes. So revised. And can we say that the demographers were can like make small changes, like we find zero population blocks out of sync, something like that. So we'll do yeah. our best to clean it yeah, up. Yeah, so we might need to make. Of, it. Yes, I don't have a problem with in the any wrong of location. that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with any of that as the motion maker. I'll second that. Do we want to take it out to the public? So let's see here. Hello, it's Connie Murray. I'm also a representative from the League of Women Voters. Congratulations, you guys. I am on the redistricting committee for the local league, and I, my role is just to observe and then report back. And I've been lucky because I was assigned you guys, and I was also assigned the city of Marina, which did a fabulous job. So I think I'm a lucky charm. Anyway, congratulations and thank you. Connie, were you the UUCMP? Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep changing my name. I'm, I belong to UUCMP, and I run a lot of meetings for them. So, okay, I'm, so that's that's how you came up. I just want to make sure because I didn't see the uh, microphone all color. the time. It doesn't stick, so I don't understand. I'm yeah, pretty no sure. Stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Connie, for your comment, and I'll return this back to the committee. Do a roll call vote here, Commissioner Lau. Surprise me. Uh, yes. Commissioner Eisenhart. Uh, before I vote, the screen yes. share is showing what I think we've agreed on as Plan Two A Rack. And um, again, we're, we we're going to just we're going to rename this one Plan Four, right? Yes. Right. Yes, that, that's correct. Thank you. This and is just a copy of a map that I started with. So sorry for the confusion. <laughs> fabulous. A very uh, strong, heartfelt I. Commissioner Lilly? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Yes. Commissioner Olver? Aye. Commissioner Schiavone? Yes. Commissioner Malkin? Yes. Commissioner Ishikawa? Yes. Commissioner Suffrage? Yes. The motion passes unanimously. Well, with that, I, I want to thank you for your service. Um, we will include you on the meeting uh, notice for the special board meeting on April 1st. Our board will now have time to deliberate uh, from Monday night when they hear what this recommendation is through the first. I think you've done a fabulous job and hopefully they don't have any tweaks given that at least four of them have been our attendees for this session maybe that message just got through i hope there aren't too many tweaks um, because i i think you guys actually rolled up your sleeves and got into it and came up with some really different uh lines being drawn but uh very well considered and uh very thoughtfully talked about it. so thank you for your time and uh, it, 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 we can call a journey yep. since we've been together for now over a month and through two major holidays <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i'm not sure this one's major <laughs> it depends who you know if you're irish no uh if we can just have, if i could just take thank you <laughs> susan if i could just take 30 seconds and maybe others want to as well uh, I want to thank all of the co-members of our commission. You have all been incredibly uh, delightful to work with. 
Uh, Dave, you are as constant as a northern star to keep these things operational. And uh, Joel, thank you. Joel, thank you so much for all of your keeping us up to speed. And mostly, though, I'd like to criticize, he's there but on mute, as one attorney to another, Mr. Laredo, always talking, monopolizing the whole conversation. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. I just wanted to say that. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, if, 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 I'm, oh, if I may, I just wanted to say thank you as well. I was on the redistricting for District 5, and that was really an undertaking. And everyone here was really very, very uh, thoughtful and engaged, and I really enjoyed it. And then just as a local, I'd like to say for anyone who might be new to our community, um, I've heard it said a couple of times, but we have had uh, Latinos on city council and as, as a, a longtime mayor. So there have been Latinos in those roles in the past. So out of respect, yeah. I wanted to say that. That's a good point. And I just wanna thank everybody too. It's been really great working with all of you and I'm very happy that we came to the outcomes that we did. And I'll, I'll echo Aaron what Gerbra. Aaron I'll Gerbra echo. to everybody. Aaron <laughs> Aaron I'll Gerbra. echo everybody's thanks. Okay, and thank, thank you. Thank you. And well, thank, thank you, everyone. Joel, and thank you, Dave Stoll. Thank and you, okay. demographers. <laughs> and to our wonderful demographers. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you, guys. <laughs> hey, guys I got to tell great. you, the, the real-time stuff was impressive. That was pretty cool. Wasn't it? Yep. Uh, it was wonderful. All right, so thank you, everybody. We are adjourned. Have a good evening. Go you get gre green beer somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.